Now, I would like to turn our attention to a different but equally important issue. In fact, perhaps it will be one of the most important issues in this summit. And I'm talking about inclusive climate action. Cities around the world are facing the impacts of climate change and taking forward the dramatic transformative actions that will be required to address this challenge. But another major challenge that many cities face is that of social inequality, which, like climate change, is a threat that is rising all over our planet. The pursuit of a low-carbon development presents a substantial opportunity for cities to tackle the dual challenges of inequality and climate change. This is critical to help mayors better make the case and win broad public support that they need for climate action. Now it is my honor to introduce City Foundation President Brandy McKaylee, who will explore what it means for cities to capture this opportunity and to be truly inclusive in their approach to the climate action. Please, you can come to the front podium. Welcome. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. So I'm, I'm incredibly honored to be here with all of you, but I'm actually really excited for what we're about to unveil in just a few moments. Um, we've all traveled here and left our corners of the world to convene in Mexico City because we each deeply understand that despite our cultural and geographic differences, we have a shared responsibility to help shape our collective future. We're also here today because we increasingly understand that our environmental, economic, and social challenges and opportunities are just as interconnected. As cities continue to rapidly grow, these engines of opportunity are also at risk of continuing to grow inequality. Resources are limited, and far too many residents are struggling to make ends meet. According to a recent report, by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, cities comprise 42 of the world's 100 largest economic entities. So there's no question that cities are at the center of the global economy. But what the question we need to ask ourselves is, how do we harness this influence and scale to address disparities and inequality? At the City Foundation, investing in cities has been central to our work from the beginning. As more people around the world move, move to urban areas at unprecedented rates, we are expanding our work to help build vibrant, inclusive communities where no one is left behind. Because if we're developing our city's infrastructure, we must also develop our people. If we're sustaining our environment, we must sustain quality education, jobs, affordable housing, and social services. We have to integrate each approach. We can no longer operate in silos. So to protect our climate and serve our cities and residents at the pace of progress needed, we have to change our mindset and act from a place of both or and instead of either or or. We can't sustain those trade-offs because climate action is both an environmental issue and an economic issue. Sustainable infrastructure, both urban development and community engagement. Poverty, both ecologically damaging and socially devastating. More and more cities understand this, and highlighting their success is critical to inspiring others around the world. And so we're proud to support and to share with you today. We live here together which is a short film featuring six cities, Bogota, Cape Town, New York City, Paris, Portland, and Seoul, each with inspiring examples of leaders with a clear vision of inclusive climate action and the projects and policies to help deliver that vision. Now, the film showcases is just a, a, a small sample of some of the great work happening in C40 cities to deliver a climate action that benefits all parts of the population, but we need to do more to tell this story. Cities are at the beginning of this journey, and we believe that more support is needed for mayors, city officials, and the people they serve 
in order to ensure that the most disadvantaged communities benefit directly from efforts to address climate change, particularly at a time of so much uncertainty and division around the world, finding bold solutions will help our cities continue to be beacons of hope and deliver increased quality of life for all. We'd like to thank Mayor Hales, Mayor de Blasio, Mayor Peñalosa, Mayor Hidalgo, Mayor DeLil, and Mayor Wonsoon for generously sharing their time and their stories with us. I think they have all show up as rock stars in this film. Um, we hope you find their words and actions as inspiring as we have. As usual in society, when things go wrong, it's always the poorest of the poor that suffer. So, so climate change is, is, is a reality that whatever you do, how you design, what projects you want to do, you have to include climate change as a factor. I've seen the projections. We understand what it means for a city like this. We have to keep building our plan farther out and farther out and farther out because we literally have to protect our people. We have to protect our way of life. It's really essential stuff. We don't have to choose between social goals or quality of life goals or environment goals. They are the same. Si nous n'incluons pas la totalité de la, de la population, nous n'arriverons pas à résoudre le défi climatique. Part of the urgency of this issue is that cities are leading. Cities are leading on climate, but they're also leading on these issues of income inequality. If there is a way to combine social equity with environmental responsibility, that is powerful. This year is on track to be the warmest yet on record. Some new figures on global wealth and income disparity, and they are so shocking it takes a while for them to sink in. At least 40 people are dead after a massive landslide in Colombia. Hurricane Sandy crashing on shore. More than nine out of 10 people worldwide live in areas with excessive air pollution. 15,000 deaths because they were living in homes they couldn't afford to heat. If the warming continues, an additional 100 million people will be plunged into poverty. We're a coastal city. We're talking about huge amounts of public housing. Some of the poorest people in this city uh, live in Manhattan uh, below 14th Street. Uh, all of that is immediately threatened by climate change. This area is profoundly vulnerable. So we're setting up a, a comprehensive set of uh, resiliency measures, literally a, a loop around a lower Manhattan to protect it. Uh, for decades to come to recognize the progression of the threat and actually set up the physical kind of barriers we need. I think it's dual purpose. One is the uh, employing uh, the energy consultants from low-income families, and through them, we can make uh, the many humble homes uh, energy efficient. So it's like you know, catching two birds by one stone. L'idée, c'est de montrer aux habitants que on peut se réapproprier la ville autrement. Euh, se déplacer, c'est très important, mais la ville doit être pacifiée également. Et le fait de d'avoir des moments ou des espaces géographiques importants sans voiture ou avec moins de voitures participe aussi euh, d'une ville plus apaisée. We had a situation where we um, had to look at houses that were built uh, 10, 15 years ago, no ceilings, no waterproofing. The impact socially on the people living inside there they have got chest problems, it's cold in winter, it's damp in winter, and that's why we took the initiative to retrofit and put ceilings in all of those houses. We have retrofitted 8,000 homes, and that will lead to a reduction of 5,600 tons of carbon emission. The climate crisis is a crisis. It is the most significant fundamental crisis that we will face as people. 
but there are real opportunities in climate responsibility. You know, we have to accept the past and we have to honor the past, but I'm a strong believer that you can design your own future. Il faut considérer que les êtres humains font partie de cette planète et que la pauvreté est un frein justement à euh, la résolution. The job of the mayor is not guaranteeing the prosperity of current generation, but the next generation. The fight against climate change has the possibility of unifying us, has the possibility of concentrating our energies and allowing us to think about rebuilding our society, reshaping our society, and just in time for us to address an inequality crisis which is reaching very dangerous proportions. A city is only a means to a way of life. A great city can help people not feel inferior or excluded. We are creating a way of life. Cities are the drivers of change around the world. And if you want to counter or deal with the effects of climate change, it needs to be in cities. Thank you so much to the City Foundation for that wonderful and very important film. Thank you very much. Our next panel will carry forward with the theme of social equity and explore how C40 support cities in the pursuit of inclusive climate action. I would like to welcome to the stage the Four Foundation Director of Equitable Development, Don Chen, New York City First Deputy Mayor, Anthony Shores, Paris Deputy Mayor, Patrick Klugman, and Lamia Camille Shawi. She's the director of the OECD Center for Entrepreneurship, SME's Local Development Tourism, and head of Champion Mayors for Inclusive Growth in Cities Initiative. Welcome all. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, or I guess it's still morning. Good morning. Um, First of all, thank you very much to the C40 and congratulations. Uh, we hear that there's a very exciting strategic plan now in place and of course congratulations to the mayor of Paris. Uh, it is uh, wonderful that she's assumed the chair and we're very excited to see what the results and the future direction of the C40 will be. Uh, I'm Don Chen from the Ford Foundation. I just want to mention a couple of things about the foundation which is uh, devoted to reducing inequality in all its forms around the world. Uh, we have offices in 11 parts of the world, mainly in the global south and also in New York. Um, and we firmly hold the belief uh, that uh, inequality can't be addressed unless we address some major challenges. Climate change is one. We have a, a major <coughs> program on climate change. Uh, and we also have a, a program on economic inclusion. So we, we try to really weave these threads together uh, to form cohesive strategies uh, that can accomplish these goals together. Uh, the, the topics that we're going to talk about today uh, are terribly important, uh, not only as the C40 has said in many of its materials and in, in the awards last night, not only because of the moral imperative of social equity, which we're all familiar with, uh, it's also important because we know that economic growth can be better uh, when it's more sustainable, when it's more socially inclusive uh, over long periods of time, and I know one of our speakers, perhaps all of them, will speak to that. And then finally, it is terribly important from a political economy standpoint. Uh, we, we've grown to believe, we've observed that uh, when people believe that their economic conditions, uh, their social needs are not being met, it's very hard to advance other agendas. It's very hard to address a climate change uh, a mitigation agenda. And so uh, forming these alliances, developing the good ideas uh, like the City Foundation showed us uh, and in Brandy's speech, um, identifying how to do it is absolutely critical. And so uh, here we are with uh, two deputy mayors from uh, our leading cities in the C40, two of our leading cities, and a uh, representative from the OECD who will speak to this. So I'm first going to turn my attention to uh, the deputy mayor of Paris, uh, Patrick uh, Klugman. Um, deputy mayor, uh, please tell us uh, why this is such an important opportunity, the C40 chairmanship. And also, I believe you have an announcement to make about a working group within the C40 
that you'd like to share with the crowd. So tell us why it's so important for uh, the mayor and your team uh, to participate in this venue. Well, uh, for um, Paris, it's been um, a tremendous opportunity to continue the efforts that we carried before COP21. Uh, for COP21, we really made something. I mean, everyone uh, made tremendous effort that led to the conclusion of what's called now the Paris Agreement. But in, within all the stakeholders, cities played a great role. And uh, we played a great role by organizing the voices of all the mayors with all the, the networks of cities, uh, ICLE, UCLG, and of course uh, C40, and uh, with uh, Michael Bloomberg and Michael Bloomberg's team, we organized a Mayo Summit, which, which was probably the biggest ever uh, gathering of mayors ever known. And the mayors were so uh, visible, so tangible about their action on climate that it really, in a way, shaped the negotiation at the COP21. And we didn't want to lose this momentum, neither for us as a city of Paris, as the host city of the COP, but for cities. And it's a tremendous opportunity to continue to take C40 from where it is, one probably the most influential city networks, city network on climate, and to not to to bring it to another level. The level is that the moment we are uh, facing now is crucial, is essential, and if cities don't make it, we won't make it at all. Mm -hmm. And if C40 cities don't make it now and reach a 1.5 degree agreement, then it will be impossible for other cities because we have the research, the, the funding, the access to finance due to C40. So we have all this support. So now it belongs to us, the cities, to showcase, to, break it, to bring it into reality this 1.5 degree. And the recent research that was, that was released here uh, by uh, the C40 is that if the C40 cities reach the 1.5 degree uh, goal, then we will have made 40% of all the work, uh, of the um, global work that has to be carried. So that's why it is so important for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I, I know you have to leave early, so it's don't okay. be alarmed when the deputy mayor has to leave. So. It's okay, I think yes. you have more time than you have more time than you yes. thought. Okay, very good, even better. Um, so uh, Deputy Mayor Shores, um, uh, along with Mayor Hidalgo uh, and Mayor de Blasio, uh, is working within the C40 uh, to really <coughs> advance the social equity agenda that is um, a more prominent feature now with the, the new strategic plan. And um, why is it so important for you uh, and the city of New York to participate in the, city 40, uh, in the C40 in this way? Well, Don, I think the, one of the things we've been most proud of in our work with C40 has been encouraging literally that focus, that shift to including inequality and inclusion as part of the central mission of C40. When we came in, when the mayor came into office and asked us to create a strategic plan for New York, it was built very fundamentally on climate issues, resiliency and sustainability, of course dealing with growth, but fundamentally on the question of inequality. And our strategic plan for New York, which includes raising 800,000 people out of poverty and near poverty, creating million, another million jobs, uh, raising wages, creating 200,000 units of affordable housing, those are the kinds of equity goals that are balanced with a series of very ambitious climate-related goals, uh, reducing greenhouse gases by 80%, many of the things that other cities here are doing. Our notion in doing that was to leverage the two. In other words, to look at the $20 billion climate adaptation program we have and use it to create jobs in communities for people who need those jobs. To think about how our community engagement around those projects can enhance uh, community resilience can, can increase social capital in low-income communities in particular. And that's why a lot of this, uh, the C40 inclusive climate agenda is important because it's reflecting exactly that. We're also spending a lot of time thinking about how to take a vision and implement it mm -hmm. and drive it through the organization. And that means thinking about every tool we have. New York City has about 375,000 people who work for it thinking about who we hire, how we hire, where we hire. We spend about $16 billion a year buying things. Mm -hmm. 
thinking about who we buy from, how we buy, where we buy. And of course, we regulate a lot of the local economy and thinking about the rules that we have to regulate business and, and uh, commerce in the city can be also an important tool in advancing inequality, the inequality agenda, as well as our climate and sustainability agenda. Driving metrics to do that, using the research that I'm hoping C40 will help us support um, to create, identify what works in New York and elsewhere, tools that we can use, and measures that we can have consistent across world cities so we can see what kind of progress we're making. This is obviously more important than ever for us right now with the rise of nationalist, populist governments around the world. Cities are going to be more threatened by this and are going to have to step up in a bigger way. For New York, as for many of the cities here, we have always been about immigration. We've always been about social integration. And we've always been about innovation. Mm -hmm. And they are related. Mm -hmm. And using these tools to advance those goals reflects exactly what the point of the statue in our harbor is about, mm -hmm. for which we still thank the French, um, mm -hmm. a, a statue that welcomes people to New York for yes. all of those reasons. Yes. So I think that's why this plan makes more sense to us than, yeah. than anything else could possibly be and is very deeply aligned with Mayor de Blasio's agenda. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, Lamia, um, the OECD is a different player in this space than uh, uh, most of the members, uh, all of the members of the C40, uh, and yet it has uh, recently elevated its work on cities uh, within the context of its inclusive growth uh, uh, agenda. And I'm curious if you can tell us about that. Uh, and of course, this is the result of a partnership that we've had with the OECD, so I'd love to hear uh, your reflections on that. Sure. Thank you very much, Don. I think we all agree here that maybe the two defining challenges of our time is rising inequality and fighting climate change. And the OECD has been working on the, in this area for a long time. But as you know, the OECD is an intergovernmental organization serving national governments. So we are mainly providing recommendations and working with national governments and also international platforms like the G20 and the G7. But for both agendas, whether it comes, for, it goes uh, for climate change or inclusive growth, we strongly believe that if we want things to happen, we need to engage with cities. Mm -hmm. So we have been working in these two areas with cities. Uh, on the uh, inclusive growth agenda, by the way, that the Ford Foundation has supported from the beginning, um, we thought that at one stage, it was very important to engage uh, mayors because um, we know that you know, rising inequalities is an issue, but um, to get the political support and the momentum to address that was extremely difficult in the current political context. However, we know that mayors, they are confronting with this issue at the local level on a daily basis, and they are, taking, uh, they are leading the charges. So we decided to create the champion mayors the, for inclusive growth campaign. It started with the campaign and we launched it in New York with Mayor de Blasio and 20 other mayors. And then progressively this has become an initiative because now we have a, gl a global coalition of 50 mayors who um, made a commitment to engage into specific areas and take concrete action to fight inequalities. Mm -hmm. So working with these mayors, we, decide, we, uh, we uh, drafted uh, the Paris Action Plan that was delivered two weeks ago in Paris at this meeting hosted by Mayor Hidalgo. And in the Paris Action Plan, we have these two, four pillars of action. Education, labor market and jobs, uh, housing and built environment uh, transport. But thanks to the leadership of uh, the office of Mayor de Blasio, we were recalled that we need also to reintroduce the climate change dimension, although it, it didn't mean that we didn't address that. It was also part of our agenda. It's not that we were recalled that we need to address both in tandem. So uh, we have been talking here about the co-benefits, the win-win, but we need also to be very conscious that there are also sometimes some trade-offs between the two objectives. Eco neighborhood is a fantastic example. We know that it can lead to a gentrification issues. Um, land use regulation is, can be good for, uh, for green objectives but can uh, drive up housing costs. So it's important that we document on that. 
Uh, so the objective of the, of the initiative, of course, is to uh, provide data, help to share best practices, but also make sure that the work that we are doing with mayors is reported back to our ministers, to our constituency, uh, because we also believe that it's important cities are, li as, are leading the charge, but they cannot deliver by themselves. Right. We need also to engage national governments. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why we can help to bridge the gap between the lo local and the national. Yeah, that's and great. Yes, and that connection is critical. Um, I want to turn back to the deputy mayors. Um, uh, you know, mayors are, are masters of the art of the possible. They're also masters of balancing multiple needs from multiple uh, stakeholders. Uh, and if there's one thing that the C40 could do to support these mayors uh, that are really trying to do excellent work, what would you recommend? Uh, why don't we start with uh, Deputy Mayor Klugman? Well, uh, what uh, C40 can do on the climate action for mayors is, is really simple. We have very uh, clear objectives. We want every C40 city to have a climate action plan. Our cities have had one for many years now, but it's essential that uh, every C40 city has a climate action plan and C40 can help building this. Uh, and the second, um, that it's a three uh, step plan. First, you need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Then you need to have the, the measurements mm -hmm. to show the effectiveness of the policies driving. It's also essential, and C40 will have uh, all the, um, the assistance and the support to help city measures their peak, their emissions, the, the cost and the efficiency of their policies. Then the first step is um, to help cities uh, finance their uh, green projects. Mm -hmm. There is within uh, C40 a, a brilliant initiative called the uh, Climate Finance Facility, and it has to reach much, much, much higher level if we want to reach the goals that we set here. So this is very uh, briefly what C40 mm -hmm. will do for C40 cities. Mm -hmm. And by the way, and I'm saying that with OECD, we will share all the data we have because there's a lot of research in C40 with all other uh, cities that may need it. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, just a, a closed club. Right, and uh, Deputy Mayor Shores? Well, I, I, nothing, uh, I wouldn't build on what Patrick said because I agree with that 100%. I would add, in particular on research, uh, two things. One, the demonstration, clear evidence-based demonstration of what's work, mm -hmm. what, what works, and what works to advance multiple agendas. Mm -hmm. So for example, as we talked about before, advancing the inequality agenda while we deal with climate change, there are tools that these cities have come up with mm -hmm evidence and research that supports the efficacy of those mm -hmm. will be extremely important. Yeah. So we all know, not that we're trying, mm -hmm. but that we're succeeding. And I think that's particularly important, and I think we both touched on it, both my colleagues, is big cities, the New Yorks and Parises and Tokyos, have substantial resources to do some of that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. Smaller cities, less well-off cities, mm -hmm. technical assistance from C40 to help that knowledge transfer happen, I think can be extremely important. Yeah, and uh, we're running out of time, so I'll just conclude just with an observation that yes, research, evidence, leadership, uh, a shared sense of um, learning, uh, and also backing each other up. I think all of those things will be terribly important. Uh, I think in the space of addressing social equity intertwined with climate change uh, action is gonna be especially critical because it's a relatively untested field. Uh, there are relatively few examples uh, of demonstrations, policies, practices, uh, like we saw in the video, uh, and the metrics that are uh, designed to really track progress so that you can achieve these goals simultane simultaneously uh, are still uh, relatively uh, underdefined, underdeveloped. And so uh, if the C40 can do more of that type of work, I think that'll be a great boon to those who are trying to um, undertake it. So uh, that concludes our session today. Uh, please join me in thanking our panelists, and thank you very much. Great.